Can I go over to here? Yep, thank you. Oh, sorry, no, we're here with Chris first, and then we'll go over. Sorry. Thanks. Um, I wanted to pick up on what that lady was saying earlier. With the environment? Uh, yes, and yep. how it, well, facing it in some way. I go from A to B, and I walk along a road which is about a mile long, and this road is very problematic for me personally because um, it, when cyclists on the odd occasion ride on the pavement, it really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. And also there are a number of occasions when cars drive on the pavement just to park half on the pavement, half on the road. And this is a road that doesn't have any yellow lines on. Um, and this happens regularly, and I get pissed off by it, seriously. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking, and on a couple of occasions last week, the timing of these two cars that were mounting the pavement was such that they mounted the pavement right next Near to me. Near you. Yes. Mm. So that obviously triggered me even more. And I'm that. thinking, yeah. well, quite. Oh, totally. And I know it at the time. That's good. Um, so you're observing yourself feeling angry. You can feel the anger coming up. I get you. caught out by the anger. And yep. then, say, one minute later, I'm you able realize. to catch myself. Yep. No, that's good. That's good. Now, I'm thinking that why on earth would I want to... Con I can take another route to, from A to B. Why on earth would I want to continue using this road, yep. which I know just that stretch of road is where these happen, because the other stretches of road that I use, that doesn't happen. Yep. Why would I want to continue using this stretch of road to be triggered in my anger when I could take another route which wouldn't trigger me? So why wouldn't did, what does your anger make you feel? Uh, I can't connect to this thing underneath. It's just red hot rage. Yeah, but, but it makes you feel some things even as you're describing it. Oh, it, I have an addiction. I like it. It's, I like came it? to a yes. realisation where I, I really Can we be more specific of what do you like about it? Um, uh, I might like the abuse that happens to me. Why would you like abuse happening to you? I don't know. It's yeah, just, do. I've just realised it. Yeah, you why, do. why do I like the abuse? Why, yeah, why do we like abuse? Well, there's a few reasons, but not. Uh, I'm going to phone, uh, go and hone in on the one that he's feeling, right? <laughs> Some others will be different. Why do I like being abused? Yeah. There's a feeling that comes up in you when well, you're abused. Well, self-loathing. No. No. Isn't there a feeling of injustice that comes oh, up inside? Oh, totally, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so when you're abused... Just mention them and I'll say yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> so there's a feeling of injustice that comes up in you. Yes. And what does that make you feel? Uh, we go down the train. It makes you feel superior. Oh, I have that, yes. Right? In other yes. words, it makes you feel like, yeah, there's another stupid person doing another uh, stupid thing. Yes, yes. Right? <laughs> there's another stupid person doing another stupid thing. <sighs> Arrogant, superior, all those, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, so it makes you feel like you can judge them and get away with it? Uh, yes, I'm highly judgmental in that situation. Yeah, yeah, so yes. you can judge them and get away with it, that's good. Judge them. Oh, that I'm, that I'm right and righteous. Ah, yes, it yes. makes you feel right. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you like about it. The anger gives you these things, right? Okay, yes, okay. yes. There's your addictions. Your addictions are you want to feel injustice because okay. when you feel injustice, you get to feel superior and you get to feel like you can be judged and you get to feel like you're right and they're wrong. And that means that underneath all of that, so that's your addictions, it means underneath all of that, is your fears that you're not superior. In fact, you're inferior. Uh, and that you're judged constantly by others and that you're often wrong. And you don't want to feel those things. I don't want to feel that I'm wrong or judged by others. Those are the things you fear. Otherwise, you wouldn't create those addictions. So you ask the question, why do I walk down that road? It's because you get to feel all of those things when you walk down that road. Exactly. And that now when I you walk down the other road, you don't get to feel. Yes. That's why you walk down the road but I now no longer want to walk down that road and walk down the one where it doesn't happen. Well, I suggest... Because then I feel I'm treating myself with such disrespect for continuing to go through these feelings in walking down this particular road. Why would I want to be so disrespectful towards myself? Because you want those feelings. But now why do I want to feel when I have the choice to consciously choose another route? Well, you, want to, you still have these feelings of wanting these feelings in you. 
And until you actually okay. feel all the reasons why, you're still going to be okay. drawn to walking down the road that allows you to feel all those feelings. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So, I, so basically, if I'm going to face those, I'm going to have to continue walking down that particular road. Well, walk down the road and instead of feeling the anger of it, feel the injustice and go, what, you know, what's in my childhood is really being... I can't get past the anger. I can't feel the stuff that's underneath it. That's my yeah, problem. Yeah, so when we can't get past the anger, it's because our anger feeds our addictions. If, we can't, if we're not getting past anger, it's not real anger. It's, it's addictions that are not being met. So in other words, when you walk down that road, you get to feel right. You get to be judged. You get to feel mm -hmm. superior, right? You get those things up. So, of course, you're going to walk down the road, right? Until you realise that these are all addictions covering over deeper emotions where you don't feel superior and that you need to feel the pain of that. And you don't feel like you're right a lot of the times. A lot of times you feel wrong. And in fact, in your childhood, if you think about your childhood, you were made to feel wrong many times, even when you were right. All right? How did your dad make you feel? Uh, it's like he killed me, basically. How? Because he was and is totally incapable of expressing emotion. Mm -hmm. um, he w did and continues to fly into rages mm -hmm. on a hair trigger, basically. Mm -hmm. um, he never and still doesn't outwardly uh, show his love towards me. Mm -hmm. I um, agree. And in fact, I've, for the last couple of years, I'm the one that's, through what I've gone through, who's been able to move towards him to start hugging him and yep. things like that. Um, but it's, it's been complete. I mean, it's like a, a walking brain. He's a walking brain with no connection. Yep. And I, you know, so the rage that... that, that came through and the emotional disconnection and the lack of any kind of demonstrative love, not physically, but, mm. you know, vibe -wise. Emotionally, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and he, he's always felt superior to you. He's always right, you're always wrong. Okay, okay. These are things that you will feel as you work your way through your relationship. But a lot of these things are actually related to your dad in terms of how your dad made you feel about yourself and how your dad made you feel in terms of whether you, mm. in terms of your environment and justice and all all these kind of things, you feel very like there's a great emotion that rises in when you th consider your father of huge amount of injustice in your relationship okay. with him. Right. Yep. And these particular things cause you to want to, instead of feeling the the, the sadness that's in yourself about those things, you want to overcome your sadness and your fears by creating these addictions and this road is one of the ways you do it. Sorry? This road is one of the ways oh, you do it, walking down this road. Hmm. Like I said, many of our day-to-day, minute-by-minute actions are totally driven mm. by our avoidance of certain emotions. We were driving in the car, Peter and Angela driving in the car, and they then asked me some questions afterwards and said... Um, you know, if there's any feedback you want to give us, I'd be ha we'd be happy to receive it. And I said, no worries. Um, okay, let's start. Like, <laughs> um, and we went shopping together, didn't we? We went shopping together as well. And I just listed five or ten of their addictions that I observed in a space of one minute. And actions that they took as a result of those particular addictions in the space of that minute, if they were aware, they would have seen differently. And that is the case for the majority of people. The majority of people do not realise that even their moment-by-moment moment choice and decisions are driven only by specific emotions they're trying to suppress or get. This is the thing with addictions. We're trying to suppress certain emotions while at the same time get others. And, uh, and most of our actions are taken. And so, like, we, if I give it, you don't mind me giving the illustration of driving along. So, Pete's driving along the car with us in the car. He's a little bit nervous that we're in his car. And, um, <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah. But at the time, when you picked us up from the airport, he was a bit nervous. And, uh, and so, and then with Peter, he's a very sensitive man. 
So he's very sensitive to the emotions of every single person around him. And so what happens was, as he was driving along, if there was a projection from any car driver around him, he could feel it, and he would automatically respond with his foot on the accelerator. So it would be off the accelerator, on the accelerator, slight turn here, slight turn there, slight movement away from that person. <laughs> that lorry driver is pretty angry, got to get away from him. And he didn't realise that almost every choice he was making on the road was being driven by the avoidance of a fear of some emotion coming from those particular drivers. Does that make sense? Mm. And, and this is something that we're frequently unaware of with regard to most of our life. We're, we're not aware of how much of our life is invested in denying uh, or suppressing the real deeper emotions that drive us. Now, now, once Peter became a bit more conscious of that, he started to realise like, every time that he feels the need to put a foot on the accelerator, that means he wants to get away from the person behind him. <laughs> you know? And every time he feels the need to put it off, that means the person in front. And every time he just swerves a bit to the side, that means it's the person. there's a feeling coming from the person at that side. And if you can allow yourself to feel it, you can work out a lot about yourself. You can work out what emotions you're denying, what emotions you're suppressing, what, what you need to work your way through. So you're suggesting that I, I try and connect with my feeling of injustice and superiority and every time that particular situation happens. Yep. You, every time, every time, you want to create injustice to prove to yourself that you know better than they do <laughs> in that moment, right? And this is the, the feeling that it gives you of superiority. Mm -hmm. So this is where you prefer to dr go along a road that makes you feel like everything's unjust because it then gives you this feeling of strength that is not able to be felt when you go on the other road. Yeah. But then I'm not facing the sense of injustice when I'm walking down that road. You're not. You're, what you're doing is you're going into anger and the anger makes you feel strong and okay, right, superior and yes. Yes. Makes, you feel, makes you feel justified yes. and makes you feel like you know, they're the one that's wrong. I'm right. Yeah. You, but how, how, if I'm so still caught out by the anger, how can I access the sense of righteousness or injustice if well, I'm so caught out by the anger? Well, you're caught up by, by the anger because you do not want to feel the opposite. And this is what you need to pray about. So oh. what, you, what you have underneath these addictions is the fears that you need to come to terms with. The fear that you're not right. The fear that you're not superior. Okay. In fact... The fear that you like your dad tells you that you're inferior, not right, always wrong. You know, these are the feelings that, you know, the feeling that, uh, you know, you want to be angry with your dad, really. Yes. And while you want to be angry with your dad, you're going to create that. And until you get to the point where you just want to grieve what your dad has done, you will continue to want to create that. Make sense? Mm. Mm.